I've been building ponds for way more than half my life and this is some of the cool stuff that gets to happen because I'm a pond builder seeing cool stuff like this to be in Spain and actually see some of these structures hand picking our stone being educated in another country I'm literally like a kid in a candy store like this is Christmas this is Christmas for me we are going to build a pondless waterfall the easiest way to learn something is to teach it we are rocking and rolling on this pond we appreciate you guys tuning in Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. It is Monday afternoon, end of February-ish. <laughs> it's Monday, that's all I know. I think it's the end of February. I am heading out to meet the Jack Harju Atlantis Waterscape guy. And you guys know when Jack and I get together, we do some pretty amazing stuff. But this time, it's just slightly different than the other times because we are heading out to Spain. That's right, Spain, the other side of the world. And we are meeting up with Seth. Seth is a potential customer of ours and what I want to do with this particular vlog is just take you guys on the journey of a consultation. And yes, I could do that locally here at home which would make a lot more sense than me traveling to the other side of the world but I thought this one would be more fun because maybe we'll see some cool stuff on our way. The hardest part is always leaving the family. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? The family behind. <laughs> so gonna miss them immensely. It'll take us a few days. We've got a day of travel there, a day of travel home and then three days to figure out everything in between. So let's get started, get that Uber ride out to O'Hare International Airport, and we'll see you. Say bye, wish me luck. I don't think they're camera people. <laughs> so when we go out there and do this kind of stuff, everybody thinks we're gonna be vacationing someplace in Spain, and the whole world thinks like we're gonna be gone for months, but it's really just a few days, and it's all work, right? Somebody said, enjoy your vacation, and this is far from a vacation. Yes, I'm hoping to see some cool stuff while I'm out there, but we will use every minute minute of every day we're out there to its fullest potential. We have to figure out not just where do we get all the rocks, but the design. So we're gonna take you through the design and the drawing and how we lay all that stuff out, painting it out on the ground, measuring everything up. We have to meet with the architect, we have to meet with their general contractor, we have to meet with the homeowner and the family and everything else in between. But it's a tedious project. We have to locate all of our rock, all of our gravel, all of the equipment, our team, how long that's gonna take, etc., etc. But here's my Uber ride. And so let's get the show on the road and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. All right, made it. <laughs> this is kind of weird because I don't usually film myself in an airport all by myself, but I made it to Frankfurt. Would have loved to show you some of that trip, but I barely made my flight. But now I'm here and I'm searching all over for Jack. Said he's somewhere near this area. So let's see if we can't find him. <laughs> welcome to Germany. Uh, yeah, right? All the signs, I can't read them, but I'm pretty sure they say, welcome, Brian. <laughs> you would think that. Oh, did you get your coffee? Well, you got a lot of dust in your camera there, buddy. Get your hands off of my gear. Are you excited or what? We got one more leg of this. I'm trip. so excited. I actually was like dinging the bell on the plane, like let me off, because I think we flew right over Spain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough for now. We'll catch up with you later. We just made it to Spain. We left four o'clock yesterday. It is noon here the next day. It has been a long time. I think I got about an hour of sleep on the plane, but we're headed over to meet Seth. He's gonna come pick us up and then the fun begins. I have no idea what we're doing first. I don't know if we're gonna go sightseeing and just kind of get a feel for the area. I don't know if we're meeting with architects. I don't know if we're checking out stone yards. A nap sounds like it should happen sometime today, but I think the next time we'll see you guys is gonna be over at Seth's house, maybe the hotel. I would like that guy to get a little bit more involved too, but I think he's tired. All right, see you soon. <laughs> Hey bud. We made it. We're in, uh, just outside of Valencia, Spain. I gotta tell you, I, I never thought we'd be here. Right? We do consultations 
all the time, but to do a consultation out in Spain, like who would have ever thought 20 years ago when you got into this, you know, I've already been doing this half my life at that point, but no. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I've had like big dreams of things that I would accomplish, and I've pretty much accomplished them all. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. This is, this is awesome. I'm excited, the plant material is different, the rock is different, the layout of everything is different, the house is incredible. Yesterday, we didn't really talk to anybody because we were dealing with sleep problems, oh, right? Man. <laughs> we, the time change just from home to here was uh, something to overcome. We're starting off bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning, getting this thing rocking. The ideas are flowing like crazy, and it's all inspired by the layout of this house. Yeah, so just like all our other consultations, we have the customer send in pictures of the backyard. He even did some video and stuff, and the second the two of us walked into the house, we instantly changed all of our ideas. Yeah, because the vantage point we got in the video especially was from the bedroom, and we kind of took that as like the most important part of the space, not knowing what the layout of the rest of the house was. When we walked in here, we're like, no. Well, and I think, no, and, I, and because... I think designing a, a water feature to be visible from your bedroom is a good idea, but how much time you're actually spending in your bedroom, you right? You get up in the morning, you might have a cup of coffee in bed, and then you're out of your bedroom. Yeah. It's not like where the family goes to hang out. So you want to be able to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. It's awesome to be able to get up in the morning, and like that's the first thing you see is something beautiful like cascading water, but it can't be the main focal point, or it can't be the main vantage point, rather. And I think when we walk through the house and show them, they're going to really get a feel for what we're looking for when we're designing a water feature 100%. from the inside out. We saw that front door and we're yeah. like, we had all these ideas, we're just sitting in the back and then we're like, where's the front door? And you saw where the front door is. I was like, all right, shift, shift, <laughs> shift ideas. We got to walk through this place. So I think you said it best. Like instead of talking about it, let's just go show them, let's show right? Them. Let's just show them. All right, all right, guys. I want to kind of take you through the house, show you where Jack and I's mind was as we were laying this thing out over there at the restaurant. After that, then Seth's going to come out here. We're going to kind of lay out the whole plan for him and let's see what he thinks. But here we are. So this is the front door right here. And what we really want to take advantage of is as you walk in, there's an opening across this sunken family room and it goes right out that way so in that space right about just past that concrete mixer over there right about there we're gonna get a waterfall that is that space right there so then as you come through the house you go around this really cool spiral staircase and then the house even opens up more and there's gonna be these giant sliding glass door windows right here that are gonna lead you out to this outdoor space now we really really want to take it advantage of this and we want that water to come right up to the foundation of the house here so that space is right there so we've got the waterfalls over there this space here that corner is this corner right here so we've got this big pond coming right up into here it's about 20 feet by 16 feet kind of a sand beach area over in here nice little waterfall maybe 18 to 20 inches high coming in over here and then it goes through a channel kind of back and around this there you go do the waterfall <laughs> he's swimming through the channel we're gonna 100% save this big tree right here get rid of some of this lower stuff in here wrap that pond around just like it did right here and then we want to do a deck that kind of comes off on this pie shape quarter pie you can almost see the paint right there and then it runs all the way down about three feet off of the concrete slab that way the reason we're doing that is so we can really bring that water up and underneath the deck so picture this giant deck that attaches all of these bedrooms together out into this bigger outdoor living space right here overlooking the giant part of the pond that part right there big stepping stones going across the wetland so those are those stepping stones they lead to a sunken fire pit back over in here behind the berm for that waterfall adjacent to the berm for these bigger waterfalls over in here the giant boulders are going to sit all the way around it you can go to the fire pit and then out into the open space where they can still play soccer our wetland is going to be part of the pond and then right off the deck it's going to go straight down five feet so if you can imagine all of this basically being water stepping stones in about five six feet from where jack's at waterfalls right where jack's at and then that berm we can get that berm up about four feet high and then just blend it right into the back surrounding area over there, making it look like it just came out of a natural hillside. Look at how good Jack is at his job. I can't wait to show Seth. I can't wait to show his family. I can't wait to get the family interaction on everything. Hopefully they say yes and we can get back out here sometime later this year. Who knows? All right, stay tuned. We made 
made it to our first stone yard. This is so cool. There's just so much awesome stuff here. And the guys that are helping us are more than helpful. And thank God they speak a little bit of English because I don't know if we could figure it all out. But look at some of the skill that's happening out here in Spain. Like this is just one of the coolest walls I've seen in a long time. And it was meant to have water like come out of there, but of course it leaks because liner doesn't go back behind the wall. It comes up in front, but unbelievable craftsmanship here. More exciting than the craftsmanship here is we actually found some stone that we can really work with. They've got something very similar to our weathered limestone. And so if we come over here, this is a type of stone that we're very, very comfortable with using. And we love all the cragginess in it. We love the natural contours, all the crevices and stuff in there, the texture on the top, making it easy for kids to walk around on it without slipping and falling. So we've got some cool stuff there. We've got some stones over here that they've actually used to create some like monuments and stuff, signs. But if we look at the backside of it, like how awesome is this rock? But it's a little smoother, still has some texture and stuff to it. So we would take a rock like this, lay it down, it becomes a destination boulder. And then if we look over on the other side of the fence, we've got this awesome pile of granite. These are gonna be perfect for landslides, kind of blending in some of that other stuff, obviously for our wetland filter. This is gonna be so good. So tomorrow, we're actually headed to the quarry to go tag. We're gonna need about 150 tons of stone for this whole project. So tomorrow we actually get an invite out to the quarry. They said this has never happened. They've never ever had a customer come out there and actually wanna tag the boulders, especially 150 tons of boulders. But like we said before, it is so important when we come back here to do this project, everything is organized. We don't have the luxury of coming back out here and then saying, all right, we need an extra 50 tons of stone. We're gonna need another week because deliveries aren't set up right and all that kind of stuff. All of this stuff has to be there on site when we're ready to use it because we can't change flights and we can't send people back and forth, back and forth. I'm super excited about tomorrow, checking out the quarry. I'm really excited to be working with the brothers. This guy and this guy, wherever he went, over there and getting all this organized. I think what's kind of fascinating though is even on the other side of the world, stone yards kind of all look the same. <laughs> Just different stone. I did think these things are interesting. They have a lot of these. I'm not sure what they use them for, but they're cool. Um, and that twisting and turning car ride got, got me a little green. But now that we're up here with the fresh weather, I'm feeling much, much better and even happier because the stone that we found is just amazing. It's all so perfect. There's a big variety of different stuff. There's some big chunky stuff. There's stuff with some a lot of patina on it and some plants that are growing out of it. The wildlife behind me is interesting. <laughs> A lot of times when we do these traveling jobs, the thing that we worry about the most is finding the rock. And to have the opportunity to actually come to the quarry and hand select the rock we're gonna use for this project is just such a treat. We don't get to do this at home. We don't get to do it really at all ever. We deal with the middleman. And so to actually have the ability to come out here and see where this stuff is originated from is just such a cool thing. And the landscape is just gorgeous. Let's show you around some of the rock. Let's see what Jack thinks and what we're gonna use. I love some of these big chunks over here you look at this rock back over in there these are just so nice I love the character on here stay we might want to get some of this prickly stuff out of here because it is a wreck pond but like the patina on there is just so cool you got this rock here there's some gorgeous stones back up over in here that not only we can use for bridges, we can use as stepping stones, we can use to finish some of the sheer descends in the pond just because of the overall height of them. I mean, this rock here stood up, is probably about four feet this way, and about eight feet long. That's a whole wall in a pond. Some of these guys, just the terraces on them, are just gonna be so perfect. I'm so excited. Well, let's go check out some more and see what you guys think. Jack. How exciting is this, bud? Awesome. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Dude, like there's so many rocks here that are fantastic, which is like problematic for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> but this one, that's coming home with us. 
That's gonna stand up right in the pond and probably either be just underwater or just above water. We don't know yet, but it's definitely yeah, gonna be something that's a use. beautiful. And then, then these small ones like Stuff in here? Like this, these small ones. There's so many, Bri. Like we just gotta pick the ones that we like the most and that's hard to do here. It's nice because normally, like I would even say I like this rock, but we can be particular with them because there's so many. Like I don't want this one because no. setting it with that angle yeah, is weird. It's got like a weird angle here yep. and it's got a weird angle there. Like why would we even bother with it? But these so cubes, like this. Yep. Oh perfect. Even this one, the way it comes out. Yeah, like I that, love that. I can definitely see us using that, doing something. And the thing is, like you and I are very much in tune with yeah. what rocks we like. Like I would love to use a gigantic. Oh my one god, it would be so awesome. But I don't think the machine we're gonna have is gonna pick this. We up. couldn't fit that size machine in the yard. No. No, to pick up something like this, you would probably need like a, a 20 ton machine at least, maybe a little bit bigger by the time you stretch it out. So as much as I would love to have it, it's not realistic, but a lot, we can get some really sizable rocks though for what we're gonna do. You're so much like a billy goat. <laughs> I believe we were in Spain. Tagging boulders at a quarry. <laughs> Jack, we're trying to negotiate right now. <laughs> we want those rocks that are up top. They're just perfect. I, I could picture that as looking out from the deck, just that whole far side of the pond. Even the way the plants grow down through the cragginess. Yeah, he literally said he could. He said he could take this and bring it right to the house. Yeah, just get that whole piece right there. That's what we need. <laughs> not the stuff we would have inside the water because it is very sharp. This is the stuff like in the water to here and sticking above into the landscape. Even in the retaining wall, like the way the plants like. Imagine this is the back side of the fire. Yeah. Oh, it'd be so cool. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> so obviously you can tell we're pretty excited. Ah. Ah. <laughs> it's just so cool. And uh, we have no idea what they're talking about down there, but what we did gather is they're just as excited and passionate about stone well, that's what, as that's we are. What, uh, Luis said, Luis said to Seth, he's like, I don't know what they're saying, but I can tell they're just as excited about these rocks as I am. <laughs> and we are. Yeah, this is so cool. And, and we've got about eight more places to check out. So let's get back in the car and go check out some more. Look at this. This is so cool. Wait till you see this. This is so cool. So there's these walls everywhere. This was a structure built really just for the cattle, as a place to get out of the weather and stuff. All hand done. Just incredible. That is awesome. doors they go from one to the next <laughs> immense amount of stone that's in this thing isn't that crazy I've been building ponds for way more than half my life. And this is some of the cool stuff that gets to happen because I'm a pond builder, seeing cool stuff like this. I mean, to be in Spain and actually see some of these structures, hand picking our stone, being educated in another country is just such a honor. And this is just so fascinating to me. I'm literally like a kid in a candy store. Like this is Christmas. This is Christmas. type of stone over here this is all the garbage look at that I mean just then they're gonna take all that stuff and put it in pallets you can see all these pieces
So this property is pretty amazing because we started over with big giant chunky stuff. We're in there, you know, in their shop over there and, and they're split in stone. And then we come over here and he's got all these. There's every kind of rock you could work with. <laughs> <laughs> these slabs are gonna work perfect. So this is gonna be our bridge stone that goes over in between the pond and where the intake base giver is. So they'll be, they'll be coming off their deck, walking on over a path and they'll cross over this and imagine the water coming right underneath here. Probably with like an air gap, maybe five or six inches. And then on the other side, it goes into the intake. So you're crossing over the water. Where you're standing, Brian, this we're gonna use in a different way. So we've got one section of the pond that comes right up against his patio, like right out the back of the veranda. So we're gonna take this and go vertical with it. Yeah, it'll end up looking like this is just the foundation of the house and water's coming right yeah, up to so it. So we're gonna have liner up behind it, probably with a termination strip on yep. the foundation. And then this is gonna stand up in front of it with a slight lean back so it doesn't go anywhere, but we'll lock it in into a trench in the bottom. This will work just perfect. And then we're gonna frame it out with some big boulders on the sides. It's gonna be like, you walk up literally to the edge of the walk. The water's right here down like 30 inches. It's gonna be perfect. Hey, I don't wanna make all these viewers jealous, but just look at, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I want to move to Spain and just work here because of the rocks. It's, Say it's it again. so incredible. Like these are piles of garbage. They're not even <laughs> using them. It's just crazy. All the cool fossils in here. Or vines, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, that went. Woo! <laughs> we're I'm, we're I'm back still, here. I'm still that, buzzing from I that. I know. That, <laughs> that was rock like, yard. That wasn't going to check out the rock quarry. That was an adventure, right? Like, yeah. that was amazing. Well, I had an awesome time. You fell asleep in the back seat on the way out there. You missed <laughs> all the views of the mountains. It was incredible. I peeked up every now and then. Those twisty roads, like I said, they got to me a little Probably bit. But I didn't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> but yep. so awesome. Like one of our biggest worries is always choosing the right stone for the job, right? It's not a worry on this one. I'll tell nah. you that, that, that is probably some of the nicest stone I've ever seen. And to see where it was born and how he was going to peel back the layers and get the different types of rock, it all fits the bill perfectly because we can use an indigenous stone that's native to this area. It's going to fit perfectly with the rest of the landscape. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. I it's mean, gorgeous. It's going to build itself. Yeah. It's, it's going to be easier to work with. There's giant, giant pieces. I love that it's indigenous, right? Yeah. So it's going to feel like it's part of Valencia here right? because it's from Valencia. And uh, Lucas was very adamant about that. He's like, you can't use a granite from seven hours away because this is Valencia. Yes. It's not Barcelona. <laughs> He's like, you need to use my stone. And he was right. I mean, this stuff is just cool. It's so awesome. So incredible. You can tell how excited we are. I mean, we're still kind of buzzing. Like Jack said, <laughs> we're buzzing off of it. I can't wait to get out here. I'm so excited about the next step, which is really, I guess, getting him to sign off on it and I think that's happening in a couple hours yeah we've got dinner with him tonight we're gonna close this thing up and get it on the schedule and you guys will see us next time building this water feature it's gonna be so epic I, I wish this was my house because I'm gonna be super jealous when this is done waterfront living right out the backyard here in Valencia Spain yeah, I mean how do you beat that hang on guys and in about eight months we'll be back here bye bye <laughs>